All right, so some of you may know that I recently installed an SSD uh, into my MacBook Pro. What's uh, different about my installation is I also opted to include um, my 500 gig drive in the swap uh, rather than removing it completely. And the way I did that was by installing a, a 9.5 millimeter uh, drive bay adapter that takes your optical drive or DVD drive and turns it into a two and a half inch hard drive bay, a second bay to your to your original one, uh, which gives you the ability to run two hard drives at once. Obviously, you've got to sacrifice your um, optical drive, but for me that wasn't a big deal. I'm not using that very much now uh, these days, anyways. So um, I'd rather have the extra storage, especially when you consider um, the fact that I have an SSD in the main in the main drive bay and SSDs as of right now um, aren't offering the most capacity uh, for your buck um, and, and at least not if you want one that performs well um, like the one that I chose which is um, an Intel G2 SSD um, I'll put the actual part in the uh, description but um, those of you who, who know it will, will know it by that name anyways I chose an 80 gigabyte model and um, so far I've been impressed um, the reason for doing this video is to give you an idea of what kind of performance improvements you can expect to see. So the first task that I'm going to perform um, now that we're running off the SSDs, I'm going to do um, an application launch test. Um, now for this, I'll just go to my applications folder and I'll just select a bunch of different apps here. I'm going to skip a couple like uh, Front Row for example, so I'll select all those and then I'll select some here. The reason I skip Front Row is because it's going to launch in uh, full screen mode and uh, it'll, you, you won't be able to see uh, the speed at which these other applications are launching. So we've got about, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 applications here. Um, now. I performed this exact same test on my machine before I did the uh, SSD upgrade and when I was just running off the stock 2.5 inch 500 gig drive and the same task basically beach balled my computer, um, I couldn't move, um, it, was, it was basically stalled and you couldn't go any further. Now, that, I mean it's not really a big deal when you consider that you're not going to do this very often but this test is more of a theoretical one to show you just how superior um, an SSD can be. Um, given the right set of tasks. Now, you know, maybe these tasks don't exist yet, but um, this, will give, this will show you the theoretical difference. So I'll go ahead and open these. Now, you want to keep a look at the, uh, at the sidebar over here. Keep your eye over here because this is where um, the apps are all going to be launching, and you'll see this bar expand um, as, the, as the apps launch. And it does so extremely quickly off the SSD, so here we go. So you can see now that it's basically gone ahead and, and launched every single app that I selected there, uh, you know, inc including things that were already open. Now, this is not such a scientific test when you consider the fact that um, I've got other apps that were already running in the background, such as, you know, screen capture apps and, and, and whatnot. But what is impressive about it is just how quickly they react um, um, to that command, uh, especially when, when compared to my previous experience with a stock drive. Now if you want to get an idea for yourself you can do the same sort of a test on your uh, MacBook or MacBook Pro or any computer for that matter. Go ahead um, attempt to uh, launch every, you know, a, a similar number of applications from your apps folder and see how it responds because like I said I think what you'll find in most traditional uh, hard drives is a much slower response to what I just saw and possibly even you know um, a complete delay or stall um, you can see here that I can I can basically go ahead and start selecting uh, different apps here. I mean, I've got the things like iMovie open. I've even got Photo Booth open. So there's a, another camera here. Um, so they, I mean, there's a significant amount of things running, and it still remains it still remains snappy, you know, under under that pull. So uh, so far, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with uh, I'm impressed with its behavior. Obviously. The main thing that people look towards with an SSD is improve boot times. That you know, that's the case too. I wasn't going to do a boot video just because there's so many of them already out there on YouTube. Um, you know, there's, it, it doesn't really give you any extra insight um, if I do one too. Um, but the other, the other benefits are obviously, as you know, I mean, there's a, it's, it's a, it offers a little bit better battery performance and emits a, a little bit less heat. Um, but again, the, the main thing is, is, is uh, 
file read and, read and write. I mean, especially random read and write. Um, you're just seeing significantly higher numbers than any traditional uh, drive can uh, can give you. And um, in the next part of this video, after I go ahead and just shut all these apps down, I'm going to show you um, some results via XBench. I'm going to run uh, the XBench um, in real time so that you can get an idea of, uh, of what kind of benchmarks to expect from a similar setup. Um, I'm running a 17-inch MacBook Pro, um, the 2.8 gigahertz model with a big graphics card and all the rest of it. And um, so those numbers you've probably seen before, but the numbers to look at um, once I do run the uh, the uh, benchmark app is uh, the in and out numbers on the hard hard drive, and um, and I'll do that. Go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so now we've got XBench open here, and I'll try to shut down whatever I could. Uh, basically, we're just running ScreenFlow along with XBench right now. I don't I don't know how much ScreenFlow is going to influence our numbers. Hopefully, not too much. Um, even if it did, it'd probably affect CPU before it would affect the uh, disk read and write speed. So that's where we're going to keep our eyes and um, I'm going to go ahead and start it and uh, you can watch as the numbers come down in real time. So these are the numbers coming in right now. What you're seeing over here is the sequential uh, read and write speeds, and, uh, the different size of the uh, the blocks for the writes. Um, these, I mean, you're seeing some impressive numbers here, especially for sequential uh, read and writes. Um, you know, 80, 80 megabytes per second um, on both. You're also seeing some good numbers on the on the, the random read and writes, and I, I think this is sort of the the area that affects your, um, you know, your everyday computing, having that amount of throughput really affects the feeling of snappiness when launching applications or just general computing for the day. Um, you know, overall, I'm happy with the upgrade. I mean, it's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to pay 250 bucks for an 80 gig drive, but I mean, if you're on if you're on your computer all day or if it's uh, your livelihood, it's it's probably worth a look at least. Um, so anyway, yeah, I hope this gave you a better idea and uh, uh, stay tuned for my further videos should be covering some similar subject matter or maybe not. Um, but anyway, yeah, thanks for watching.